Please stay tuned after this Trailside program for an exciting free gift offer and valuable information on the Trailside Nature Club. 277 miles long, up to 18 miles wide, and a mile deep. The Grand Canyon has been called an inverted mountain range. It's also one of the most astounding natural formations on Earth. Perhaps one of its best kept secrets is right here, the North Rim, especially in the winter when the roads close by deep snow. A few hardy souls do make their way through and find some of the best cross-country skiing around. Hi, I'm Peter Whitaker and I'll be joined by the only American to win an Olympic cross-country skiing medal as we hit the trails to the Grand Canyon and make our own adventure on Trailside. Trailside is brought to you in part by Chevy Blazer. Next time you're having fun outdoors, make sure Mother Nature has a good day too. Almost 9,000 feet above sea level and a mile above the Colorado River lies the Grand Canyon's North Rim. Now it's much harder to get to than the more popular South Rim, but well worth it. Winter snowfall averages over 100 inches, making its valleys and forests some of the best uncrowded cross-country skiing around. We'll be starting here at the North Rim Nordic Center in Kaibab National Forest, where miles of both groomed and backcountry trails lead us that way to the rim of the Grand Canyon. Now the beauty of this trip is a chance to see the canyon with very few tourists and lots of unspoiled wilderness. Joining me is Bill Koch, who has been called one of the top cross-country skiers in the world. In the 1976 Olympics, Bill won the silver in the 30-kilometer event, becoming the only American to win an Olympic cross-country skiing medal. He's also a World Cup champion. Hey, Bill. Hey, Peter. That skating technique looks great. Is that what you used to win the world championships? Really close. That was the V1 skate, which is actually first cousin to the marathon skate I used to win the World Cup, which is also how skating got started. Boy, these skate skis are small. Are we going to get a chance to use these later today? We will, a little bit later on. But we're going to start off on these touring skis. Uh-huh. And they'll be a lot lighter than what you're used to in alpine skiing. Boy, those are lightweight. They're a lot narrower also. Uh-huh. What about the base here? It's all roughed up. Now these are great because they're so user friendly and that you don't need wax. And you can see how the patterns lay back like this so that when you kick back, they grip the snow. I see. So if you're going uphill, it'll slide forward, but you won't slide back. Exactly. Makes a lot of sense. What kind of boot would you use with this setup? We got some great boots. Boots have come so far in the last few years. Now they're very stable and have a lot of support. You can see how for stability and directional stability, they have grooves in the bottom of the boot. Uh -huh. That corresponds to the ridges in the binding. And so all you do is you lock the pin into the binding. Right. Quick, easy movement. And what? you have all the support plus all the freedom of a free heel. Boy, it's just a nice binding setup. Looks uh, real clean. It's great. What about ski poles? Now, ski poles, again, they're going to be different from uh, alpine skiing that you're used to. They're a lot longer all the way up say. to the top of your shoulder. Because we use our upper body, uh -huh. we need a longer pole to propel ourselves forward down the track. All right. Well, I know about ski poles. Just go right through the top of oh, the grip. Hold on there, Peter. What you want to do is come up from underneath that loop like this. OK. And then grip the pole. Right. And we have a tight pole strap. That allows us to totally let go of the pole at the end of our pulling action. Well, and that gives us a lot more power and therefore a lot more glide. That's great. It just kind of hangs out there. That's right. How about these baskets? I don't think I've ever seen a basket quite like that. Yeah, they're uh, smaller. They, you don't need as much surface area when you uh, ski on groomed tracks. Uh huh. Looks like you get a great grip. Very good. They're very, very uh, effective. Well, all this equipment looks great. Should we go give it a whirl? Let's definitely do it. All right. This feels just like hiking, Bill. It is. It's a lot like hiking. But you know, you get the added benefit of the glide. That's what makes it more fun. Uh-huh. You know, let me show you the proper coordination of the arms and legs 
Just raise your poles out of the ground for a minute. Uh -huh. Just like that. Great. Now see how that, just let your arms swing naturally at your side. Right. That's good. So now just lower your pole slowly down to the ground. Okay. Good, good. That's the right timing right there. Yeah, that feels better. Real rhythmic. Right. Now all you have to do is raise your poles back up. Anytime you lose that rhythm, just raise your poles okay. back up. Now should I have a lot of weight on the front leg here? That's exactly what you want. A full weight shift, total weight commitment on that forward gliding leg. Okay. This is starting to feel pretty good, Bill. Yeah, you're looking good, but let me show you something. Stop a second. I want to show you about your pole here. Okay. Now, when you plant your pole straight up and down like a walking stick, notice how... Try to uh, go forward now. It's a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So if you plant at an angle like this, back by your feet, now go, and you can really push forward and get better glide that way. All right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just get a little more upper body movement, huh? That looks a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Poles really help. Now we're starting to cruise, huh? Yeah, we're really picking up speed. You know, we're ready to shift gears to the double pole now at faster speeds. What you want to do there is plant both poles at the same time. Uh -huh. Fall on your poles to your whole upper body. That's right. Kind of like an abdominal crunch. Right, just like that, only even lower. That's good. Starting to feel pretty comfortable with this, Bill. We say we head back to the lodge and get packed. Okay, sounds great. You know, usually on an overnight winter camping trip, you have to carry tremendous loads. Sleeping bags, fuel, food, it all adds up to a lot of weight. But tonight we'll be staying in a yurt, so we'll be able to carry lighter packs. We got it made because the lodge is carrying all that stuff, including that skating gear I was showing you earlier. Great. Some items we will have with us today, insulating layers for both the upper and lower body, and water, really critical to stay hydrated at 9,000 feet. First aid kit, wouldn't go out there without one. Same with sunscreen, the new snow, lots of sun reflecting, lots of layers of sunscreen. Safety items, blanket, cord, some smoke, all good things to have with us today on the trip. I got a repair kit here in case we have any equipment problems. Some energy bars. I think we're gonna be burning some calories out there today. And I like to carry binoculars in case we see some wildlife we can take a closer look. A headlamp. And a compass, complete with a reflecting mirror. And just in case the weather comes in, we can stay on track. Great, let's take a look at that map. Show me where we're going today, Bill. All right, Peter. Here we are starting out at the lodge, and we'll follow the Saddle Mountain Trail all the way out and spend the night out here in the yurt. Great. How's the skiing, uh, the terrain in here? Beautiful right? skiing. Nice, gentle terrain. You'll love it. And then the next day out to Saddle Mountain Point? Right. First we'll do a few uh, backcountry trails around the yurt, then we'll head out to Saddle Mountain Point. That's where we're going to see the Grand Canyon. Beautiful views, and we'll ski out here also to Point Imperial. We'll get another view of the canyon. Good. How far is it from the lodge all the way out to Point Imperial? About 16 miles. And the yurt? About 12 miles. How long do you figure it'll take us? Well, we'll take our time. We'll take most of the day. So this won't be going at an Olympic pace? No, first day I'll probably take it a little easy on you, Peter. Good. Well, let's pack it up and get out of here. All right. Sounds great. One of the nice things about the North Rim Ski Area is there's such a wide variety of terrain that makes it really great for all ability levels. And as we come into this hill here, Peter, we want to shorten up our stride and relax a little bit, cut the pace back. Kind of like mountaineering, be a little more efficient on the uphills. Exactly. Actually starting to slip out just okay. a little bit here, Bill. What you want to do is just go into a wedge now, dig your inside edges in. That's called a herringbone. And the steeper the hill gets, the wider you want to have that wedge be. All right, that works great. So this is a pretty low gear for going uphill. Yeah, it is. You know, the only lower gear than this is the side step, but you won't use that unless it gets really steep. Take 
geez a break, Bill. What do you say? Oh, me too. That was a good section. That was. That was a tough uphill section there. Do you figure? Two, three miles? Yeah, I bet it was. All of that. I'm going to grab a bite, something to drink. Maybe even throw on another layer here, too. Yeah, we might as well stop for a little bit. It'll be cooling off. Layer would be good. How's uh, the next section? Well, it's mostly downhill, so probably end up leaving this on, actually. You know, we uh, generate so much heat in this sport, and it's being in the winter temperatures and all, we need to have these all these thin layers so that we can regulate our body temperature. Boy, I've been burning the calories. I need to refuel. This is uh, some homemade gorp. This stuff's great. Want a bite? Uh, no thanks. No thanks. Let me show you though. I, I got the perfect snack for the backcountry. All in one food, good nutrition, lots of carbohydrates, quick energy. A baked potato? Yeah, it's great. You want one? When was the last time you washed that sock? Come on, Peter. I do my laundry. Uh, I think I'll stick with the gorp. Thanks. All right, to each his own. All right, little hill up here. Yeah, hey. Perfect chance to uh, learn that uh, wedge. So just push your feet apart, just like the wedge in Alpine. Okay. Even Perfect. with a free heel. Free heel, just stay centered on your feet. Okay. Now to turn, just lean to one side. Perfect. All right, perfect. Great. Now that's a big hill. That's a good one, you know, and you can't see the bottom. So I think we'll play it a little bit cool at first, how we can. Try this half wedge here with one foot in the track. All right. And one out to the side. Just control your speed. Perfect, perfect. There's the bottom. All right, let her rip. <laughs> what do you call that? Ooh, that was a sweet shortcut, I guess. Yeah. Hey, hey, there it is. Home sweet home. Those Mongolian yak herders sure had it figured out, didn't they? Yeah, these yurts are great. The old herders uh, use yak skins and poles to basically build a winter structure that they could move around. It's really the ultimate in winter camping. Hey, here's those uh, skate skis they promised us. Oh good, they made it out, huh? Yeah, check them out. We got the smooth base on them so that we can glide wax them for more speed. Uh-huh. And then these two grooves, they help the ski go straighter while you're skating. I notice the uh, tip is much lower profile. Yeah, yeah, and it's stiffer too. Gives you a better push off on the skate. Hmm. Well, should we give them a whirl? Let's do it, but let's take a break first and get ready and then take, take you out to a sweet little spot out here. It's a nice lookout I want to show you. Sounds good. <clears throat> I tell you, this is some meal here, Bill. Oh, yeah. We were spending the night out in a tent tonight, and I was doing the cooking. It definitely would not look like this. Oh, it's great being pampered like this, isn't it? I think we deserve it. We do. Hey, in all the years of your competing, is there any one experience that stands out in your mind? 
Yeah, I got a great story. You know, the last race of every Olympics is the real toughest one, the 50K. Well, the same Olympics I won the silver medal and I was having a really great Olympics. I'd had uh, top results all the way through, so I was ready for to win one, really. But it was the 50K. I'd never raced that distance before because it was my first year as a senior racer. Uh huh. So I went out really too fast. Too hard. Yeah, and I was even leading the race most of the most of the time and thought, oh boy, I'm going to bring this one home, you know. And then, sure enough, I hit the wall at about 40 Ks. Whoops. And, uh, and I had just passed the, the big Finnish racer, Juhan Mieto, one of the greatest Finnish racers of all time. Big guy, six foot six, huge guy. And right after that, I bonked. Just went under. And I was just stumbling up the biggest hill out there. And I don't think I was going to make it. Really? It was a really big hill. I was totally delirious, didn't know where I was. And uh, then all of a sudden, I felt this big hand on my back. And Yuha pushed me all the way up the hill, like 45 seconds worth of pushing. You're kidding. It's lucky nobody saw it, because it was actually illegal. We could have been both disqualified. Pushed me right over the top, and I think that that's what allowed me to finish. I don't know if I would have even made it, you know? And um, it's a great story. I ended up finishing 13th. I crawled in. He finished 6th. That's amazing. And you guys were competing. Here he is helping you out. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's kind of how the sport is. You know, there's really a great amount of respect between the athletes and in my sport. It's a great moment. All right, nice looking V1 there, Peter. You got three points of contact hitting the snow at the same time. Your two poles and your dominant foot. Good. Feels a little bit like inline skating. Yeah, a lot of similarities. You know, we got a lot of strokes and lots of different skating strides that you can do, but the V1 is really the only one you need to know to be able to go on any trail you want. Feels pretty good, a little awkward still. One of the best conditions for skating. Well, you know, these are great conditions, nice, pretty firm, smooth tracks. And then when it gets softer and more powdery, that's when classic skiing gets really fun. Tell you, Bill, it's one thing I've always wanted to do, and that's challenge an Olympian to a race. What do you say? All right, you're on. Okay, you give me a little head start? Yeah, I'll give you a, give a count of five. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five! Up, up! Whoa! <laughs> I'm afraid that wasn't much of a match. Who was that hop, hop? Well, that's in racing, you know. In racing, the faster skier gets it right away. And what happens if the slower skier doesn't pull aside? Well, we do have ways of dealing with that. Oh, yeah? I bet you do. <laughs> so, Bill, when did you first start cross-country skiing? I started as an alpine skier and then ski jumper at age six. And then around seven or eight years old is when I started cross-country. But my brother and I used to ski to school and back every day, and that's, we use skis as our transportation. Basically backcountry skiing every day, no trails. Blazing your own, huh? Yeah, pretty much. I've heard skating referred to as freestyle. Why is that? It's a really good name for it, Peter, because there's so much freedom of expression in skating. But, you know, rather than talk about it, let me just show you. Great. So starting off with the marathon skate, that's how skating got started. My left foot is in a track right now. Just have to pretend that. Now delayed switch. Now we're coming into a hill. We'll go back into the V1. Norwegians call this paddling. 
Now the, the diagonal V, this is the easiest way to go uphill. Now the knoll pole skate, the fastest one. And the V2 alternate. The V2 alternate again. Freestyle. Beautiful. Poetry in motion. Hey, let me show you a few fun ones just for laughs. This is called a canoe skate here. And then this one here is called the frog. <laughs> That's great. Whoa. Whoa. Definitely working a little harder out here, Bill. Yeah, it is a little uh, harder in the backcountry. Uh, shorter strides help, but technique's about the same as in the tracks. Okay. Hey, let's drop our packs and have a little fun. All right, sounds good. Ah! <laughs> You're it! That's the Colorado River down there, Bill? Yeah, right over there, you can see just this side of the plains. That's the, where the Colorado flows through Marble Canyon, right down through there. And right over there, you can see that other canyon. That's where the Little Colorado comes in. Uh huh. And where they join, that's where the Grand Canyon starts and just continues all the way out to the southwest. I think I remember reading somewhere the canyon was formed almost five million years ago. It was, and uh, it was all by erosion. Boy, did we hit the weather today or what? I bet we could see over 100 miles today.
Winter, with its vibrant colors and clear air, is perhaps the best time of the year to visit the North Rim and arrive at what is simply the most monumental chasm on Earth. Bill and I had a great couple days, some laughs, some falls, and terrific skiing. We're going to continue exploring the rim before heading on back. So we'll see you on the next trail side. Available now, the complete series of Trailside Illustrated Guides. Hiking and backpacking, bicycling, kayaking, cross-country skiing, and fly fishing. To purchase, call 1-800-TRAILSIDE, 1-800-872-4574. But I just love the sense of freedom I get from this and being out in the backcountry and you know making your own trails, that, that sense of freedom and adventure, that's what I really live for out here. It's a healthy lifestyle you got. It is, you know, just being out in nature is you know a connection that we've really lost today in our Western culture. The home video of this program, as well as other programs in the Trailside series, is available for $19.98 plus shipping and handling by calling 1-800-TRAILSIDE, 1-800-872-4574. Oh. Trailside is brought to you in part by Chevy Blazer. Next time you're having fun outdoors, make sure Mother Nature has a good day too. Chevy Blazer, the only sport utility vehicle with a driver control system. It's nice to know it's there. Trailside, the longest running outdoor how-to television series, invites you to join the new Trailside Nature Club. Call the number on your screen and join today and you'll receive a free Trailside guide or an award-winning video. Call now and receive a full year subscription to the outdoor magazine of your choice. Up to 50% savings at over 1,400 hotels, airline discount coupons, discounts on gear and gear repair, and much, much more. The Trailside Nature Club. Become a member today.